Hi guys, in this video we're going to be looking at the Army Painter Wet Palette. Scruffy Crow. Ah! Alright, so I got a sort of uh, targeted ad on Facebook the other day for the Redgrass Gaming Wet Palette, this one. And I thought, oh that looks good. Um, I'll have a look into picking one of those up. So I went on their website and went, ooh, that's uh, it's not exactly cheap, but it seems like it might be worthwhile. And then I did my research and found out the Army Painter one reviews almost as well. Uh, and in fact, if anything, it has a slightly smaller size on the desktop, which currently in my little crowded desktop seems like a good idea. So I ordered one of them instead. Sorry, Red Grass Games. So this is coming up very nicely packaged. Got a little bit of a painting guide, mostly for the army painter way of painting. Uh, we got how to use snips. I feel like if you're investing in a wet palette, you probably already know your modelling basics. So yeah, we've got the, the stuff for the inside. Now, one complaint I have seen online is that the sponges come folded in half, uh, which must be a little bit annoying. And then the palette itself, now this is the bit I was interested in. Oh. So already we can see that that's not exactly a snug fit. It's made out of quite a nice feeling material. And then we've got the inner layer. Oh, see that's got a bit more of a seal. Certainly not airtight. I'm only really turning out his edge with water in, but that's snug in there. So the sponges are individually packed. Seems like a good idea. Let's open one of these up. Oh, that's not exactly what I was expecting. Feels almost like a memory foam. It's very uh, sort of rubbery. Put that in there. It's got the Army Painter logo in it and here is the parchment paper for the top. Now one thing that I would probably prefer about the Redgrass one honestly would be that I don't like having to put just too many bits so that doesn't fit on top. The two black parts need the red part to fit together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that aside for two seconds. So those of you that already watch my videos will know that I already use a kind of wet palette. I use a Pringle, I use a Pringles lid, some kitchen roll, and baking paper on mine. So as rough and ready as that. Now I find this works perfectly well if I'm just painting, say, one model. Uh, I just want to slap some paint down. Uh, it takes almost no time to cut together. And honestly, going forward, I'll probably still uh, use this for some stuff because uh, using any kind of wet palette is always better than paint straight out of the pot. So now I'm going to take a look at comparing my current solution uh, with this one. I'm hoping this will help me paint much bigger models uh, over a couple of sessions whereas obviously this does dry out uh, after I don't know two or three hours. Okay I just popped to the shop and picked up a bottle of uh, deionized water. I'm going to use DI water because uh, I don't want any mould or anything like that to grow and I'm hoping this will discourage that. That's never been a problem using these super temporary ones because they dry out before you, that would be a risk. So I just use tap water in them. But when I've had more permanent homemade versions, um, that has been a bit of a problem. If not actual mould, certainly a general sort of stale smell, which is what I'm looking to avoid. All right, I think I've probably put a little bit too much in there, so I'm just going to drain a little bit of this off. There we go, the water level's now lower than the sponge, but there is a little bit of water left underneath. Let's put the top back on. So another criticism I saw of this one over the red grass one was that because the working area is smaller, uh, and when the and obviously the paper stretches out when it gets wet a little bit, or expands, should be a better word, um, 
it does wrinkle a little bit and you have excess on the corners like this. Okay, so the first comparison I need to make is the working area. So, so I'm used to a working area sort of this size compared to obviously a huge working area here. So let's do some tests with this. I'm gonna put this all back together because obviously this will just spill water wherever we tip it. Okay, with enough water inside to wet it and the band put back on, there is leakage. It's certainly not a watertight tight unit. So you couldn't put water in it and then travel with it. However, it's not a lot. So if you were keeping it flat, you'd probably be all right. It's certainly not gonna slosh. So that's a good thing to know. Okay, I've tidied up a little bit. They've both got water in. And now we're gonna get some paint on these guys. Uh, the model I'm gonna be using to test them is gonna be this Ralpartha Jabberwock. I'm mixing from the Nocturne to the Moot Green here. And I want somewhere about in between. Uh, and I'm, I'm actually finding it easier currently to work on my old one um, because I'm not quite used to the way the paint moves on this year. It is different. Okay, so I've started painting with this and although I'm finding it slightly easier to mix and get the shades that I want on uh, my old one, the consistency of the paint as far as it is usable coming out of the palette is much nicer from the wet palette. So I'm actually really starting to appreciate this thing. So I'm having a good old play around with this guy. Um, I've been playing with all my colours, giving him sort of various uh, shades and highlights and bumps and things. Um, and I was playing with these scales and I just wanted to see what it would look like with the uh, the Beltane green, how that would look with the Moot green and stuff. So I said, don't take anything I'm really painting on this model too seriously because I'm just sort of testing out these greens because I've always struggled to paint green. And I found myself much preferring uh, working on the proper wet palette. Um, it's keeping the point, uh, paints a much smoother consistency. Um, I had a break for 10 minutes or so, and this one started to dry out much quicker. If you down, see down there. And this will have actually dried like onto the paper. Whereas what I found with this one is that you can actually almost get back to the bare paper. You also get a much truer color on the white paper uh, than you do on the brown baking paper, uh, which is kind of handy. Okay, so it's completely the next day now. Uh, and I've left my two wet palettes out overnight. I've been doing a little bit of painting this morning on this one, and there's still enough water left in it overnight to uh, still be working. However, oh, and last night paints are kind of gloopy now. Uh, not really usable, but... I don't know. Could be revived with a bit of water, maybe. Let's see what the ones in here are like. Uh, so they appear to have split a little bit. That's probably a good sign. Yeah, they're completely liquid still. That's actually much better than I expected. see what they feel like on the model. Yeah, they're still working really nicely. All right, I'm gonna work on the last part, mixing a bit of the uh, GW paint with some of this P3 uh, Melif White base. Going for a nice creamy underbelly and wings. Uh, so I'll finish this off and I'll give you my final thoughts. All right, I'm gonna call my Jabberwocky done now. I'm pretty happy the way he's come out. Um, I said it was mostly just an experiment, trying a couple of things uh, and practicing in painting various greens. Uh, but he's pretty cool. Um, I've also been painting alongside him, as you'll notice some sort of blue and whites and colors. Uh, a Alice to go with him. But she won't defeat him with a, a Vorpal blade. Instead this version of Alice has got a revolver. Still need to tidy up her base somewhat. And they both need all sorts of flock and stuff. But as you'll see, I achieved a bit of layering on her dress and stuff, uh, quite subtle. That's the sort of thing that I, uh, I use my wet palettes to achieve. I use my old fashioned one for that. But just in general, some of the things I was trying, like blending the colors, so I only use the two colors really from pretty much most of this model, uh, well three. So the, the Nocturne to Moot to Meneth White Base. And I've come up with quite a varied model from pretty much those. Um, and I'm really happy the way he's come out. Uh, and some of the things I've done on there, I think I could only have achieved for me anyway with, uh, with the help of my wet palette. So as I've always said, I fully recommend a wet palette, I love it. 
And if you don't want to splash out on one or even uh, go to the expense of making a slightly more evolved homemade one, uh, this works really well and only takes a minute uh, to put together. However, the purpose-built option, I've really been happy with this. I'm really happy with the way it works. The, the membrane is certainly a slightly better solution than just a bit of baking paper. Uh, the sponge seems to hold and sort of transfer the water quite nicely. Uh, and just the whole sort of shape and size of it, um, I'm pretty impressed with, especially with the longevity of the paints. That's really going to help me paint much bigger things. Uh, and the fact it all sort of sits down. Uh, one thing I would say is for me personally, I think it'd be better if it was just this, the two black parts just set together uh, without this bit. Um, but you never know, I'll maybe find some reason for that storage. The fact that I can move this around my desk wet now uh, without any real worry about it spilling. If I put it right on its edge, it will. Um, but just generally moving it around, I've not got really very many worries about it leaking or anything. Like I said, you could definitely make a homemade one uh, that was very similar to this using the cellulose uh, sort of pan scrubbers uh, I've seen used and then baking paper in a sort of little Loctite container. Uh, you might even get a better seal than this, which wouldn't be too difficult. Um, but for, you know, for the price uh, and for the sort of quality of it, uh, I'm really happy with it. Um, so this is definitely going to be a um, sort of pretty much permanent feature of my desk from now on. So what do you guys think? Do you guys use a wet palette? Are you thinking about picking one up? Uh, do you prefer the homemade one or this one or the, maybe the Redgrass Games one? Uh, or one I've not seen? If you don't already use one, as I said, give it a go. Uh, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And as ever, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.